an elderly man sits at home, eating a TV dinner and watching George Bush's New World Order speech. After finishing a meal, he goes to make another one. He starts chopping some meat and a piece falls on the ground, as he tries to pick it up, he gets a heart attack and dies. We see a man named Nick Appleton, he buy up auction storage and sells the valuables out of them. He reaches the storage area where Eddie is bidding for lot number 36. Everyone bids and Nick buys the container for $400. Nick talks to someone on the phone and the man threatens him to get my money back. Eddie comes to the room and shows him the video of the container's owner. The old man, who died in the first scene, came every day to keep something inside and danced in front of the shutter. Eddie says it is weird but Nick doesn't show much interest and leaves. Amelia, the ex-owner of the container comes to Nick and asks for the keys to take her personal belongings. Nick refuses to give her the keys saying you didn't pay your rent and I bought the storage. Nick then goes to the old man's storage and discovers an old gold candelabra and some antiques. He goes out and gets into his truck. A man shatters the truck window and smashes his head, telling him that he owes $12,000 by tomorrow. Amelia is still outside and stares at him. He cleans up the wound and Eddie arrives. Nick tells him that he finds some antique things in the storage and Eddie asks him to sell his thing to Agatha, she will pay a good price. Nick goes to Agatha and shows her the findings, Agatha checks the candelabra and seance table. She examines it, and inside are three books with Latin titles. She calls her friend named Roland, saying that she has some interesting things for him. The man, Roland, arrives. He recognizes the table as a seance table with white cedar and sandalwood. He gives Nick $10,000 for the candelabra and tells him these books are very rare and if he can find the third one I will pay you $300,000. Nick grabs a back and loads up the books, telling him his truck is outside and he'll drive them there. On the way, Roland says he knows the storage owner, that man was a bad person who called out the demon and used his sister Dottie Walmer to possess it. Arriving at the storage, during the search, they find a secret door and go inside. Roland asks him not to touch anything, they see Dottie Walmer's corpse lying on the ground inside a pentacle. Nick sees the book and Roland pleads not to cross the pentacle. Nick crosses it and the pentacle lights up, a large tentacle writhes and rises. The demon consumes Roland and the book bursts into flames in Nick's hands. Nick runs for his life but the door is locked and outside, Amelia is staring at him. Nick asks her to open it but she locks the door and the demon consumes Nick. Two boys are stealing valuables by digging graves and a man named Mason comes there and chases them away. Mason himself goes into a grave and pulls out the dead man's gold teeth. A tooth falls out and Mason tries to pick it up and a rat bites his hand. He goes to sell his buyings to a man who tells him these are the ordinary things which are not enough to cover his interest. Mason protests that his returns are a fraction of what they once were due to the rats. The man rejects his protests and threatens him. Mason goes to Dooley, one of the overseers of the local morgue. Mason asks him to check the dead bodies to steal valuables, Dooley refuses at first but agrees after Mason offers him a drug. Mason checks the dead bodies but finds nothing precious. Mason enters another room where he discovers the dead body of a wealthy man, Mason sees golden teeth in his mouth and Dooley tells him to wait until tomorrow when he's buried. Just then, the man's family comes in and the two are forced to hide. The man's wife says to the caretaker that she will put all of his gold medals and the sword of King George inside the coffin. The next night, Mason digs the grave but finds nothing inside the coffin. He sees that the rats have taken his body inside the tunnel, so he enters the tunnel, pursuing the body. Inside, a giant rat attacks him and he crawls to save himself. Mason falls into a massive crypt filled with skeletons. Mason sees a woman's skeleton with a gold necklace around her neck. He removes the necklace and the skeleton comes to life, telling him to give it back. Mason somehow escapes from the crypt and the giant mouse is waiting for him in the tunnel. He pulls a root, causing the rock to fall and crush the rat while the skeleton is blocked by the avalanche. Masun proceeds up the tunnel and ends up getting inside the coffin. No, he sobs, trying to force his way out, but it is to no effect. The rats swarm all over him in his final resting place. Sometime later, the two grave robbers from before arrive at the coffin. They try to steal the necklace, but the rats swarm Mason's body and the two flee in terror. Men working in a coal mine, they proceed to the mineshaft elevator. Joe jumps over the elevator and then tosses a strange spherical device and runs outside. The device blasts and kills everyone in the mine. Dr. Carl arrives at the county police station and meets with Sheriff Nate Craven. Nate tells him about the case as the nine people died in the mine except Joe. Police become more curious when they get the news of the disappearance of six people. Police find a dead body and they see the body parts were cut very accurately and precisely. Nate takes the doctor to the morgue and the doctor tells him that I have lung cancer, and can live another six months. Carl plays the tape and starts the post-mortem for the autopsy report. 
Suddenly, one of the dead bodies comes back to life, and hearing the noise, Carl goes and sees Joe crawling. Carl asks Joe about the sphere and he tells him that I am from another world and I need a human host. The alien compels Carl and ties him to transfer itself into Carl's body. Alien cuts Joe's body and then we see the alien with large tentacles. He cuts open Dr. Winter's body. All mine, he says. Carl knows the alien is blind and deaf to the host and as the alien goes inside his body, Carl slits his throat so the alien will be dead inside him. The next day, Nate arrives to see Carl and finds him dead, play the tape and burn me written on his body. Stacy does not fit in with her co-workers at the bank where she works. She receives an invitation to the secret Santa party for the holidays. At home, her husband Keith is shocked to hear about the party as Stacy hates her colleagues. At the party, Gina gives all the women a bottle of a low glow, an expensive and popular beauty lotion. Stacy presents Gina with a taxidermy duck gift. Everybody is talking about the lotion while Stacy feels disgusted about her gift. Back at home, she sits watching television and ends up seeing an ad for beauty lotion. The man on TV says to her that he is talking to her and she picks up the phone and places an order for an entire case of the lotion. She starts applying lotion which causes rashes on her face. Keith asks her not to apply lotion but she says that my skin is getting more beautiful than before. One night, she goes down to the basement and encounters a strange woman made entirely of the lotion. The woman copies her movements, the two of them caress and kiss each other. Keith sees her completely wet in lotion and seeing her condition, he asks her to go to the doctor. Stacy shouts at him and stabs him in the face, then beans in the back of the head with an axe. She returns downstairs and makes out with the lotion woman again. The woman then goes to the bathtub and oozes inside it. Stacy undresses, then submerges herself completely in the lotion. She emerges from the tub and the lotion itself as if leaving a cocoon. Her skin is completely clear and she becomes gorgeous. Stacy cuts her hair short, dyes it, and puts makeup on her face. Everyone there is stunned by her transformation. Her colleagues ask about her transformation and she laughs forcefully, seemingly looking in trouble and confused. Two individuals, Edgar and Nancy Bradley, gave a presentation to a group about the habits of a species of bird called Dunlins. The group is mesmerized by the photographs of the bird's behavior and their unusual flight patterns known as murmurations. During the reception, it's hinted that they suffered a miscarriage or lost a child when it was still a baby. The two take a flight to an island, where the man driving them tells them that it's a perfect time for the Dunlins, that they're everywhere on the island now. The two of them take snaps and record videos of the birds every morning and evening. One night, Nancy hears the crying of the child and goes to see him. She finds the child but as she goes near the child disappears. She is taking the bath and suddenly a woman shouts at her, the woman appears in front of her and she screams in fear. The time passes, and she finds out from the caretaker that years ago a family lived here and their child was killed and his mother jumped from the balcony. That night, Nancy follows the voice and asks the child if it's not your mistake. Sunlight hits and she asks the child to come in the light and he disappears. She then encounters the woman who looks at her with emotional eyes and jumps from the balcony. Nancy heads downstairs and watches the birds. They form a murmuration, then swoop down and around her. She closes her eyes, taking it in. She tells Edger that she loves him. He says he loves her too. She tells him she wants to talk about Ava. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing videos.